Rebecca Davis Lee Crumpler overcame prejudices and severe constraints to become the first African American woman in the United States to earn a medical degree. She would later secure a place in history with her book of medical advice for women and children, published in 1883. Rebecca Davis was born in 1831 in Delaware and raised by an aunt in Pennsylvania who spent much of her time caring for sick neighbors. I early conceived a liking for relieving the suffering of others, Rebecca wrote. By 1852, Rebecca had moved to Charleston, Massachusetts, where she worked as a nurse, serving under different doctors for eight years. From these doctors, she received letters commending her to the faculty of the New England Female Medical College, and she was admitted for their four-year curriculum in 1860. On February 24, 1864, Crumpler and two white classmates underwent their final or examinations. Each of the candidates had done at least three years of preparatory coursework and written a thesis. At the end of the exam, the faculty voted to recommend all three women for the degree, but noted some hesitation about Crumpler. They made reference to unspecified deficiencies in her work and the apparent slow progress of her education. Some of us have hesitated very seriously in recommending her, they wrote. Nevertheless, the trustees declared her perfectly qualified for the degree and conferred upon her the title of Doctress of Medicine. She was the only African-American woman to graduate from the college. In 1860, only about 300 of the 54,543 physicians in the United States were women with medical degrees, and none of them were black. The first black medical school in the United States would not open until 1868. But a wider door was opening for female physicians across the country, in large part due to the heavy demand for medical care of Civil War veterans. For poor African Americans, medical care had been essentially non-existent before the Civil War. After graduation, she married Arthur Crumpler and practiced in Boston for a short while before moving to Richmond, Virginia, after the Civil War ended in 1865. She felt that Richmond would be a proper field for real missionary work. The last quarter of the year, 1866, I was enabled to have access each day to a population of over 30,000 colored. She joined other black physicians caring for free slaves who would otherwise have no access to medical care, working with the Freedmen Bureau and missionary and community groups, even though black physicians experienced intense racism working in the South. According to one source, men doctors snubbed her, Druggists balked at fulfilling her prescriptions, and some people wisecracked that the M.D. behind her name stood for nothing more than mule driver. By 1869, Crumpler had returned to Boston, where she practiced medicine in the community where she had been trained. She was known for treating the children of her Beacon Hill neighborhood, often without charging a fee. In 1883, she drew upon her notes from many years of practice and published a book of medical discourses, which she wrote specifically for women and mothers. Crumpler died in 1895, and her achievement as the first black female doctor went unrecognized into the late 20th century. Despite her exclusion from many of the histories of American medicine, one of the first medical societies for black women was named the Rebecca Lee Society in her honor. <laughs>